Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game Digital video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. By far the biggest controversy over the past 24 or so hours is, of course, principled technologies and Intel. For those unfamiliar, Intel are releasing their ninth generation of processors. And before the CPUs were released, the company decided to commission another company, Principled Technologies, to perform a series of tests with the i9-1900K and pit that CPU against a myriad of other processors, including the Ryzen 7 2700X, uh, various older generation Intel CPUs, and various Threadripper processors. The idea here was simple enough, that, quite simply put, the processors against one another in a gaming setting and demonstrate that the i9-1900K was the best processor for gamers. Great. The problem with these results though that were released is that they stood at odds with what we knew against established processors. While users can't really argue with the results of the 9900K because A, reviewers are under embargo and B, the average user does not have a 9900K, we do know the performance results that you would expect of a Ryzen 7 processor or a Threadripper processor for the sake of argument. And so immediately when these results were discovered, people were like, uh, but these results don't match up to what we know established as the baseline performance of a 2700X and a GTX 1080 Ti, which was essentially the hardware that they were using for the Ryzen system. So Intel were first to release a PR statement and I'm going to read it out verbatim. We are deeply appreciative of the work of the reviewer community and expect that over the next coming weeks, additional testing will continue to show that the 9900K is the world's best gaming processor. Principal Technologies conducted the initial testing using the systems running in spec, configured to show the CPU performance, and has published the configurations used. Their data is consistent with what we've seen in our own labs, and we look forward to seeing the results of additional third-party testing in the coming weeks. So according to Intel then, they are telling the world that they believe that independent reviewers, such as ourselves or other websites, will say that yes, the 9900K will put these results out consistently, and that's fine. In fact, I have no real issue with the performance results of the 9900K. They fall in line with what you would expect. After all, you have what is essentially an 8700K, but with higher clock speed and more processor cores. It doesn't take a huge leap in imagination to therefore extrapolate that the 8700K is going to put these results and therefore the 9900K is going to have better results. We can kind of get behind that. But the problem was, once again, the other processors, the 2700X and so on. Unfortunately for Intel, Principal Technologies released their own press statement. And in their statement, they admitted several major screw-ups with their results. The first one was with the 2700X utilizing game mode. Game mode is enabled in the software of AMD processors. The primary reason it exists is because of Threadripper. Long story short, it enables certain games to run at faster frame rates if you're using, let's say, a 1950X simply because of the number of processor cores. Not all games experience a drastic gain, but still AMD include it. And they are also uh, enabling users to select other modes as well for compatibility reasons, performance reasons, and so on and so on. But when it comes to Ryzen, generally speaking, the layout of the processors with a couple of CCXs isn't enough to really make a performance uh, impact in almost any title. In fact, by enabling this, you are actually cutting the number of processor cores from eight processor cores down to just four processor cores with technically eight threads versus 16 threads if you include SMT. And actually, this was a note in the original PDF that we could spot, but when most people saw it, including myself, I was like, there's no way that they were referring to Ryzen. There's no way that they did this with a Ryzen processor. They must have simply had a typo and simply meant Threadripper only. But no, since then they have released various statements and confirmed that Ryzen uh, was indeed utilizing game mode, which, as you would expect, drastically cut performance. Another argument we're seeing is users saying, well, there's a cooler discrepancy. You're using AMD's own bundled in Prism cooler compared to a higher end third party cooler for Intel and Noctua. 
And I am actually on the fence with this one. I half agree with what they've said and half disagree with what they've said. The company essentially said, well, AMD told everyone that this is a good cooler. Therefore, we are just using the cooler that most users would have available. And while I do appreciate that in theory, after all, it's not necessarily their fault that the cooler does not always allow XFR2 to boost the processor to its highest levels, you also then use a far more powerful and better cooler for Intel. So it's not exactly a level playing field. Personally speaking, I would have preferred them to utilize exactly the same cooler, whether that was at high-end AIO or whatever, and therefore both processors, or all the processors, would have had the best possible chance to run at their best speeds. Although, of course, they were all running at stock. So the memory timings for Ryzen were originally considered to be very loose, despite the memory clock speed, because the Intel system was using uh, 2666, whereas Ryzen was running at 2933, but once again, memory timings were thought to be a lot looser. However, the company have since released a statement and confirmed that they were utilizing DOCP, which is the equivalent of Ryzen um, having XMP. In other words, it runs at the best uh, timings for that specific set of memory. Regarding my thoughts to all of this, this is quite the mess. Uh, both Intel and Principal Technologies have several major scrubs. With Principal Technologies, it's not like they're a tiny company. They actually have a pretty good history working with major corporations, including, but not limited to, AMD themselves, which is kind of ironic. I do admire the fact that they did hold their hand up. Not that they had much choice at this point, although you could also argue that they had not much choice. It was basically that they had to admit that they screwed up the tests because the tests just did not make sense. Because, you know, you could just look at any reviewer or even run the test on your own system if you had a similar configured system and just say, well, hang on a minute, these results don't match up to real world testing. They're just clearly wrong. But Intel they are forced to eat quite a lot of humble pie here for a couple of reasons. One, they released a statement giving their full confidence in Principal Technologies results. And then hours later, Principal Technologies admitted the scrub. So Intel should have better communicated with that company and said, well, hey, what were you doing? How did you test it? And so on. To Intel's credit, I do believe that the 9900K results are accurate. Although personally, I don't believe that this is the only screw up Intel made here. Because the 9900K is supposed to represent a higher skew than the 8700K and the 8600K. In other words, the 9700K is supposed to be the replacement for the 8700K and the 9900K is supposed to represent a higher product here entirely. So, the argument you could make is, well, why are you even comparing this processor? It would be better for Intel to have also included the 9700K as well. After all, you are essentially offering a product here or comparing a product which is way more expensive than the Ryzen CPU available. That's not to say that I have any issues with Intel promoting this CPU as the ultimate gaming processor. But I also feel that this study should have included the 9700K as well, as I feel that for a lot of users who perhaps have, let's say, an 8600K and have been putting off buying an 8700K for some time because we've been hearing about these ninth generation rumors for some time, or perhaps you've got a 1700X or a 1600X and want to upgrade your processor, it's hard to justify the amount of cash Intel are charging for an 8-core 16 thread. So for those individuals, I think that the 9700K results would have been rather nice as well. Fortunately for Intel, the company have a good piece of news to go along with this, and that is the ninth generation of processors do actually have hardware mitigations to the security vulnerabilities that have been doing the rounds. You might have heard of Spectre and Meltdown, in fact it's pretty much impossible not to have, and Intel have managed to patch at least a couple of these vulnerabilities to get to it in just a second in the hardware. Now this is great, not only because it means that you don't need to worry about the software patches, it means that you're going to, in theory at least, not need to worry about downloading those before you're, uh, well, immune to those vulnerabilities. But, of course, these software vulnerabilities 
But of course, these software patches also have a cumulative effect on performance, which in theory, at least hardware mitigations won't have. So at least in theory, we're also going to see slight processor gains simply because of these hardware uh, patches. Patches are only for the 9900K, the 9700K and 9600K. And what we have is the variant free, which is the rogue data cache load, as well as the level one terminal fault. What about the new Skylake processors, the new Skylake X, also known as the HEDT and the Xeons? No, they do not have the hardware patches enabled because they're essentially the same silicon as before, but better bend and some other changes on chip, but they do not have the hardware patches. So that's just something to take into consideration. And now on to another story, which is Microsoft and gaming focused. By far one of the biggest announcements that the company made, other than the fact that Project Scarlet was a thing at E3 2018, was the acquisition of numerous game studios, five in total, including Ninja Theory and Playground Games. But when Phil Spencer was speaking, it was obvious that there was a possibility that other studios were coming into the fold. So it comes as a little surprise then that we do hear Microsoft are actually actively seeking to acquire another company. According to the website Kutaku, they are seeking to acquire Obsidian. Now, Obsidian Entertainment have a pretty good track record when it comes to games, including Knights of the Old Republic 2, Fallout New Vegas, and more recently, Pillars of Eternity. But the company have struggled financially of late. That's one of the reasons, of course, that Pillars of Eternity had to be taken to Kickstarter. So Microsoft offering them a whole bunch of cash and the idea of, well, I don't need to worry about the certainty of actually keeping our studio open would certainly be very tempting. According to Kotaku, it's not like these are early negotiations either and they might fall through. According to one source, it's around 90% complete in terms of the acquisition. And according to yet another source, it's not a matter of if they buy Obsidian. Instead, it's a matter of when the acquisition is finalized. It does demonstrate, therefore, that Microsoft are really doing everything they can to bolster their first party lineup of developers as well as games. It's going to be fascinating to see what all of these studios do manage to put out over the next couple of years. According to Microsoft and the studios involved, that is the ones that have already been purchased anyway, they retain their creative independence. And that's one of the reasons supposedly some of these studios actually signed because that they wanted that creative freedom, but they also didn't want to concern themselves with having to, well, remain open over the next several months. With all of that said, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.